The beta of Dual Universe has been around for just two months now. While there have been a few issues, progress has been made on this ambitious brand new MMO from Nova Quark. Hey everyone, my name's Captain Jack and welcome back to my channel. Now if you've followed my channel for quite a while now, a couple of years in fact, you know I'm a big fan of Dual Universe and what the game potentially holds for the future of sci-fi gaming, particularly in the MMO setting. It's combining games I frequently play as well and giving birth to this whole new universe and a whole level of emergent gameplay where myself, you and many others can work together to build space empires, galactic civilizations, many things like that. Now over the last couple of years I've had the privilege and honour of sitting down with Nova Quark CEO, that's the studio behind Dual Universe, JC Barley or Jean-Christophe Barley, and actually speak to him about the game him and his studio are making. I first spoke to him in around about 2016-2017, then I think I spoke to him last year as well about how the game's progressing and what's going on behind the scenes, while well, last week I got to sit down with him once again to discuss what the beta of the game is like, how things are progressing, and what players can expect with Dual Universe going forward into 2021 and continuing development on the game. I hope you find this interview insightful. Uh, I know it's about an hour long, there's a lot to sit through. If not, I've marked some timestamps down below in the video description to help you get to points you may want to hear more about specifically. Let me know what you think about the game and the topics we discuss in today's interview via the video comment section down below. If you're currently playing Dual Universe or planning on picking it up after watching this video, I invite you to come and join me inside of the MMO. The game is definitely better when you're playing with friends or a large group of players, so therefore if you'd like to come and join Redwood Industries or RWI, that is my organisation in game, then I invite you to do so. Simply come join the community Discord server down below in the video description, that's discord.gg slash captainjack, head over to the Dual Universe channel and we'll see you there. Alright everyone, enjoy this interview. Yes, ready to go. Fantastic. Okay, so my first question uh, for you, JC, is could you introduce yourself for those who may not know who you are and how you came to be CEO of Nova Quark and, you know, where the project of Dual Universe actually came from? Of course, sure. Well, uh, who am I? I? I am, you know, by trade, I am a, I'm a scientist. I, I did a PhD in AI and uh, I made a, a company in robotics before that. Uh, so, you see, there's no clear connection with video games, but I'm also a big gamer. So I, I enjoy games and I'm, I'm very much interested, you know, to innovate in the field and try new stuff and explore new possibilities that actually have unlocked due to the progress of technology overall, you know, in the last years. And um, that drove me to say at some point, hey, why not actually do a company that does what I would like to see in games and actually create that? Uh, there was a lot of technology that was at the starting point of everything because, you know, the, as you know, in your universe, you have all these uh, servers, uh, technology that allows people to be all together in the same world at the same time. This is unprecedented. And so I designed uh, some prototypes of this tech to sort of convince myself that it was uh, something that could that could actually work. And it did. So I started the company and I started to, uh, you know, uh, get, get support from uh, uh, some investors. And then we did the Kickstarter. That was a big success. And that actually attracted more investors and more uh, capacity for us to develop and to, to push this idea forward. And here we are with the beta of Dual Universe uh, that is available now for uh, soon. It's going to be like two months. And, and uh, a community that is... Uh, absolutely amazing and stunning in what they do with what we have given them uh and what you do and i know you are you're involved as well and so that's that's uh confirming you know the intuition that uh we can try this crazy idea that is absolutely scary for most of game companies to say let's let actually let's give the tools to the players so they can actually create their world create their stories and and be in control and we just operate uh this this world make sure it works put the you know the the, the frame in which things are going to happen so that you don't have abuses you get some balance and things like that but otherwise we don't create the the usual things you find in a game uh and we let the players actually take control and that, that has been a successful experiment so far we have still a lot of work on on the road until we get to uh something we could put you know a release stamp on uh but it's it's a very good start i would say very good Fantastic. I imagine, uh, I remember we've spoken like many times throughout the year. I think it's the first time we spoke was back in like 2016 or 17 Indeed. when the yes. project of Dual Universe is just coming about. Now, just this last weekend gone, we've had players in game creating their own in game ship expo, which I'm sure you've seen. For us, when we've spoken like all those years ago about the reality of that, and now it is actually reality, it's fantastic to see all these players yeah. coming together to do these things. It's possible because of like the hard work Unity have made in creating Dual Universe. 
Yes, and, and I, honestly, everybody has been amazed by what happened this weekend. I mean, I've heard, uh, I don't know the exact number, uh, but like 600 ships or more uh, all together, you know, inside the same tight area uh, and, and more than 2,000 visitors. And probably more, it's hard to know. Uh, but, but I mean, uh, it was, and also the, you know, the technology uh, had actually no problem to deal with that. And what we think is that we can push it way further. We'll see. We will have to, you know, because as we get out of beta, we hope there will be way more people. You know, that's that's the normal you know path. So there will be more players, and uh, so we we are going to constantly you know push the limits of this technology to be able to sustain whatever is needed in the game. You know, so um, so far so good, and it match you know with the I would say the theoretical side of things. We sort of know it should work. But of course, as you actually do it, you encounter unexpected complications. It could be, you know, uh, things that are, have nothing to do with uh, the algorithms. It could be like, oh, there's a database that is saturated on on the provider, you know, of the, the service, and that comes with their term of service, blah, blah, blah. Nothing to do with the tech, but we have to deal with it. And at the end of the day, it gets the the game to or, or the server to crash somehow, you know. So that that's the kind of things we have to discover on the way. That are not linked to the nature of what we're doing, but it's nature the nature of uh, deploying it on actual hardware in the real world. Of course. And this so, kind of leads into my um, next question as well. So I'd say Junior versus now in its fourth phase of beta. Obviously, it's roughly two months now since we've gone to beta. How would you say it's yep. gone so far? I mean, obviously, we've come out of pre alpha and alpha into beta. How would you say it's gone so far? It's gone very well. Uh, I think you know uh, the 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 feedback from the players has been overwhelming positive. Uh, of course, I mean I'm not ignoring the glitch here and there. There have been uh, issues. There are mm. the occasional drama. I mean, let's be <laughs> realistic. <laughs> it's to be but yeah, but nothing you know really uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, we had a pretty rough week on the first week uh, when we launched due to server issues that have been solved very quickly. And I think that's the important thing. You know, it's not that there are mistakes or errors this is to be expected mm. the real question is how fast you can deal with them um and as you know you know the the, the team is not a giant team like you would have on a mega triple a type mm -hmm. of game so we, we have to do choices all the time and our capacity to react has been excellent at the at the moment in in the you know, how we address the, the problems we know that right now there are some issues in balancing and some exploits that we are we're dealing with uh, and it's going to take a, a bit of time. It's sometimes very complicated, and we have, you know, to balance that with all the other tasks that people have to do. Anyway, so far it has been going very well, and players have been created amazing things. Uh, we have seen also, uh, you know, from our records, currently the average game time the players spend in a, in a day is three hours. That's a lot, a lot of time. <laughs> The average, you know, no, actually the median time. Mm. Uh, that's actually a lot, you know. And we had the people, actually the, the number that is interesting also is that more, uh, uh, th sorry, 23% of people have spent more than 100 hours in the game. That's a large number. <laughs> for 23%, one quarter of the players. And, and one half of the players has spent more uh, than 10 hours. That that's very good. That shows you know that people uh you know they get it. They 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 get into the game. They start to you know have their plans. They have their goals, and they and they and they go further. The game is unlimited. You can do whatever you want. So right now we are very interesting for people who have um, sort of a self drive. So they they know what they want to achieve. They they want to build an empire. They want to build a Death Star. Somebody has done that. <laughs> uh, they want. To <laughs> Uh, they want they want to do whatever they want. They want to become a pirate and so on. So this is this is working very well. What we are going to work on, uh, maybe we're going to talk a bit on the roadmap. But one important thing is now we want to introduce a mission system that is not uh, driven by us. I mean, we may add a few missions ourselves, but that's not the you know the spirit. The spirit is that players are going to be able to create missions for other players. So if you're not, uh, because you don't have time or because not you think you're not self-driven, you don't want to actually uh, engage into a long-term plan to do whatever, you can actually get into the game and you have things to do. But, but those things are going to be given by other players. And so they are grounded. You know, they are, you, you don't do a fake quest that doesn't really make sense. It's all about making sense, in fact, here. It's about meaning. It's about uh, 
uh, you know, maybe you transport that thing from point A to point B, but that actually contributes to the, the building of the Death Star. <laughs> so it's not it's not just a quest. It's something that participates in the in the in the story of the of the world. So I think this this is a very exciting. It's something that we need to develop uh, hopefully by the end of the year, and that will actually also uh, be interesting for for more players. Uh, you know. Typically, the, the people who don't have three hours per day to spend in a game, right? We understand yeah. this is this is uh, not for everyone, and that's fine. So we need to address that that type of players. For the others, they are super happy at the moment, and and the game is is uh, is really taking you know uh, uh, taking off with a, a lot of creations, a lot of uh, amazing buildings, and uh, we're very happy. Fantastic. Um, so you just mentioned about the mission system, and one of my community actually had to question on that as well. So the mission system veils is designed to give players something to do by other players, and Nobacork might kickstart to begin with. However, will organizations also be able to set missions for players to do? Like, can, say, an empire set, uh, like, a small player go, like, we, we need 1,000 of something, go collect that, bring it back to us, and we'll pay you X, Y, Z. Is that how it's going to work as well, or is it still being planned? That's the roughly that's the idea. Um, we we may not be able to create an, a mission in the name of an organization to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something we 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 add a bit later. But you know you can have one of the legates, for example, uh, publish and make sure you know make clear in the in the title of the mission that it's for an organization. Yeah. So it's it, it should be more streamlined in the in the interface. But it will come a bit later. Uh, the the important thing also is that you can you will be able to uh, issue a mission for your org only that okay. is uh it's uh, the way we see it is that it's a way also to uh, organize work within an organization so you yeah. publish thing it's not for everyone it's just for your organization and it allows sort of uh you know to to have a, a plan that is displayed for everyone um We'll see. We're trying to make it very flexible, so and then we see what players are going to make out of it. It's always the same idea. Mm. Um, in fact, in terms of design, what we're trying to do is to sort of get to the minimal building blocks, the simplest one, you know, that that will that will do the job. Because we believe that uh, players are going to be able to assemble those building blocks to do you know what we have in mind, but also more things that we didn't anticipate and that could be very interesting. And if they are not interesting, maybe we had more constraints. So you know that's a, a sort of a, a back and forth process. But the the you know the philosophy is to give small building blocks as small as possible, so that you get what is what is called emergence, uh, which is something I worked on in in AI. And so you know this is where the loop is is looping. Mm -hmm. uh, that this, these topics are all about. Uh, being amazed to observe things evolving and developing out of simple premises. And, and the beauty here is that, um, and it's totally not intuitive if you think about it, but you ha you can have complexity emerging out of simplicity. That's that's counterintuitive. You might think, well, something is complex; it must have some complex origin, right? That's not how, and that's not what happens in evolution, for example. That's not what happens also uh, in the things we see in the universe, and that's that's very 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 exciting. Fantastic. So I guess continuing our talk about the beta phase of development for the game, Novacork have been pretty transparent about what is next in terms of upcoming features and such, especially with the roadmap and also the website voting system, which has been around for a couple of weeks now. Could you give us an outline of what players can expect roughly going forward in 2021? Okay, so it's it's actually uh, pretty simple and, and very transparent. Uh, that that now you know we rely mostly on this uh, upvote uh, website to communicate about the the feature. So, uh, by the way, it had it had a, a technical issue that that we are fixing with the the provider of the service. So it's going to be restored uh, very soon. But uh, the idea is that we are publishing on this website uh, all sorts of you know features. Uh, some of them are coming from the community. Some of them are coming from us, and some of them are marked as planned. It means that we're going to do this at some point, right? Uh, some of them are marked as under consideration. We may or may not do them. It depends. It basically depends on how much people vote for them, right? So if they get very high in the voting uh, uh, scale, then we, we are, of course, going to move them you know, from under consideration to planned. And within the planned, there are those that we pin at the top of the list. So they are pinned, and uh, these are actually those that we are working on, and they, they are going to come. That, that is effectively, I would say, the, the roadmap, not necessarily short term, because some of them are 
uh, you know, have a high development cost, so they might be pinned, uh, but still not show up before uh, several months, right? Mm -hmm. So, but at least it gives you an idea of what we're working on. Of course, we're also working on the bugs and the exploit yeah. and so on. This is not in the. This is a feature only. You know, we're we're not. It's it's not <laughs> telling everything we actually do, but it's what we are working on as far as features that come up. Yes. So, for example, if you go on the website now, uh, so you see that. In fact, there's no point voting for the, the features that have been pinned because they're already in development. So, well, it's interesting to know that you like it, but uh, it's already uh, scheduled. But you see that uh, you know, filtering the issue I was talking about, but uh, uh, we have a, a lot of votes for the Voxel Vertices Editor. You know, that is the, the, the feature that will allow people to edit the voxels not only with the in-game tools that you have, you know, to deploy cubes and so on and so on, but also at the vertice level, so that you could do anything that is allowed with the the tech underlying uh, the, the the voxels, right? So this got a lot of support, 1,300 votes, right? So of course, you know, as when the time comes for us to say what's next after we've done, you know, the things we we think needs to be done for whatever reason now, then this this is probably going to get uh, a very high in the list. Uh, then, then you have asteroid mining that has been voted a lot. So we're going to to look at this very closely, mining units and so on and so on. So uh, this 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 is our way to share with the community what is possible. We only add things that we sort of agree with. Um, and by the way, if you submit a, a, you know a, an idea for a feature, your feature might be deleted not because we don't like it, but either because it's a duplicate with another one you may not have seen. Yeah. Uh, so we simply delete uh, one of them, you know, uh, because it, it takes too much time to fuse them. So, okay. Or it might be because we, we cannot do it for technical reasons or because there's, there's some other issues that, that makes us think that it's not something we want to do. So just to explain how it works. But that's a fantastic tool because you can vote for the things you want. And um, uh, we can see, you know, what, what the community actually care about mostly. And that's a very good tool for us. But right now, if you want to know the roadmap, it's basically what is pinned. Uh, we probably are going to update uh, a little bit, you know, the thing that displays on the beginning of the game so that it's uh, in sync with, with, with uh, what's going on on the Upvote uh, website. Uh, but yeah, that's the idea. And I think it's super cool. So I there are a lot of good. super good ideas. There's a lot of ideas, actually. If you, if you scroll, I mean, uh, there's currently a backlog of more, uh, something like 400, 400 ideas that have not yet been read, <laughs> that needs to be processed. Uh, but uh, as I speak, I think there's only a solid 100 of them. Uh, and uh, so the most popular are, are voted for 1,300, and uh, the least popular are getting just a few votes. And could be also because they are new as we validate them. So we're gonna have wait a bit, you know, that, that things have a time, uh, enough time, you know, to. Uh, surface, basically. Yeah. So um, let's talk about one feature minute, and that's obviously PvP. It's an aspect of Dual Universe which is always being discussed by the community and probably always will be discussed by the community. Um, mm -hmm. What would you say the challenges does Novacorp currently face in working with PvP systems and sort of ironing them out in a way? Well, uh, the PvP system as it is now, as I, as I said uh, many times, uh, at the stage of the, the early beta, is, is really far from what we have in mind in the future. So it's, you know, it there's a lot of things coming uh, in, let's say, over one year period. There will be a lot of changes. Um, the, the the things we need to do right now is balancing. So there has a there's a lot of issues in balancing uh, the current, uh, you know, a, a PvP. So this is going to come pretty soon. Um, I can't say uh, let's say about a month or something. Um, and then there are some additions we would like to add, uh, you know, to the PvP in space as it is today, because just to give an overview, uh, uh, there is no PvP on the planets at the moment. Yeah. So that's that's one limit. And uh, so you have PvP in space. We are going to improve this by adding things. Uh, nothing is scheduled right now, but it will be things like shields, uh, ability to target something from your cockpit uh, directly by pointing at it, this kind of things, right? So this this is something we, we, we probably are going to work on uh, pretty rapidly. Uh, and then the big thing is what we call territory warfare, which is another name for PvP on planets. And that, that is going to come with a lot of super cool things 
uh, not only in terms of PVP, but also in terms of uh, uh, giving value uh, and differentiation between different tiles, uh, so that you know you you have a strategic interest in in you know defending some tiles, and also uh, a, a more advanced system for um, the idea is that you know this is not it might change, so I'm just sharing mm. with you ideas here. Uh, but the idea is that when you have a large territory, so a lo lot of tiles next to each other and creates a sort of a surface like that. Uh, we want to make sure that you cannot just attack any tile, let's say in the middle, you have to have a certain number of uh, tiles uh, not that do not belong to you around your tiles so that it becomes attackable. That makes it so that uh, if you want to attack the tiles in the center, you sort of have to 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 you know to eat away yeah. <laughs> all the tiles that are uh, uh, in the way until you reach that particular tile. And in effect, that would allow to create uh, almost safe zones, even though you are into a PvP area. I guess because... you could compare it to old games like Planet Side Two in a way. If, you, if I don't know if you know that one, where to capture zones. I've, I've not played. To... I've not played, but uh, you sort of have to capture each hexagon in a way to move to the next hexagon. For example. probably, yeah, that's that's the idea I'm talking about. So I, I guess that's the same uh, the same aspect. And then. Um, so that that will be that will be something that will that will add a lot of strategic dimension to to uh, you know to the, the the question of claiming tiles. Right now, claiming tiles is more about uh, securing maybe that giga vein, but you know you you're going to take it out at some point, and so the value of the you know the reason why you've put your tile is not so clear in the long term. Uh, also, you know it's about simply you know uh, ensuring through the the right management system that. People are not messing around with your base, mm. uh, but we want to go way further than that. So times we have a, a strategic interest, uh, there will be intrinsic, you know, let's say buffs or things attached to the to the tile itself, um, and that that will be bound to um, the energy management system we are going to introduce. Uh, so maybe I'm I'm saying a bit too much now, but uh, <laughs> just just. Keep in mind that we're going to make sure that ties have an intrinsic value, that it's balanced, yeah. so that you know you have to make choices. That's always the key, you know, and that it might be attacked because people want to take your stuff, and that we want to create this kind of uh, de facto safe areas. I mean, very hard to break safe areas yeah. uh, uh, mechanism. Um, the safe zones also, we, we need to clarify exactly what's going to happen. But I mean, what is currently inside the safe zone area on the map is mm -hmm. going to stay in a safe zone. So there's uh, three planets that are going to remain like that. Um, and, and the other planets will not be safe uh, at some yeah. point, right? So that's where territory warfare will occur. Um, and uh, so that, that that's an important point to clarify because people don't know, am I safe with my time? Also, I think, you know, People should not be worried that much about uh, their time because they they'll be able to uh, move them somewhere else. They'll be able. Uh, we we actually want to make sure that they can actually sell them also, so that oh, okay. you know there there will be all sorts of ways so that you can. It's not forever. The only thing that is forever is the tile you claim on the sanctuary moon, uh, but that's more like a a, a a place where you can put your stuff, uh, especially if you leave the game for a long time. These kind of things, but um, otherwise, the idea is that tiles are going to be, you know, fluid. That's yeah. that's what we want to do. Fantastic. Glad to um, yeah. speak about that as well, because I think the territory warfare system is what a lot of people are looking forward to. And I'm going to make an observation. Hopefully, if we speak again soon, we we might see this come true when the system's introduced. I can really imagine players and organizations going to war for like hover tanks, rolling up to each other's walls and blowing them up. I think that's really going to you know, pushed yeah. you even further as well. Because you think of it now, you've got tons of organizations in the game. We've got political systems being set up, ambassadors. That's going to fall apart and people are going to fall out at some point. Intergalactic war is going to come about and you know someone's going to want to invade someone's castle or city. It's just going to happen at some point. <laughs> so when it happens, it's going sure. to be great to see. And it has to be, you know, we, we have to put all the tools in the game so that that makes sense. Mm. Right? So there, there must be a reason for attacking uh, another empire. And so that must revolve around limiting resources or influence in a region. Um, one interesting idea we're playing with is that if you own territories, you can set your own taxes on it. Okay. Uh, that's, you know, in a sense, it could be something like that. You know, you have this large territory, we offer you protection, uh, especially yeah. if you're in the center. De facto, we are spending money and efforts to make sure that any attack is going to be repelled. And so you have a de facto 
semi semi safe area uh, within uh, otherwise a PVP zone. That is, you can enjoy the benefit of this area. That you know, that's related to the you know the tile uh, intrinsic value I was talking about. But um, somehow you have to pay for that, right? So there's a sort yeah. of a tax. Whatever you do, industry and so on on this t territory, we, we're going to take a, a cut. Um, and and the idea would be to to let the system balance itself. You know, if if some empire put the tax too high, then people will, are going to leave. You know? Especially because you know it's it's very easy to do that in the in the universe. In the real world, it's another story. It's <laughs> that's <laughs> that not doesn't work that well. Uh, but in a but in a world like that, if uh, a government puts taxes beyond the perceived value of what you get for your taxes, that is, for example, protection, uh, people would just move. And mm -hmm. and so there will be, hopefully, and that's, that's an open question, in fact, but uh, there should be a sort of a balance where the taxes are sort of converging towards what people consider a fair amount to enjoy uh, the protection that, that the organization is going to bring. So that that's also a reason to go on war uh, because you know you might you want to extend your territory, in, 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 increase your taxes, basically. That's, that's, a, great, that's, that's a great way to look at it. I think there's going to be many reasons for organisations going to war for each other and starting like little fights, etc. And yeah. we'll talk about in a minute the Easter eggs which came about recently. I think that's also another reason mm -hmm. for you know organisations to go and kick kick the teeth out of each other in a way. So let's talk about that. Um, this is obviously recently players and communities inside of Dual Universe unraveled a large Easter egg puzzle that led towards the discovery of a new resource. This is fantastic, and we'll talk about it in a minute. The puzzle Easter eggs have now passed to players who were not aware due to the secrecy of this. In future, you know, of the game, will new players be able to discover more of these mysteries? Is there planning that they're going to be found in you know new elements of the game, or is that it for now? Definitely, definitely. Uh, we're we're going to announce that there's something hidden. Oh, okay. Uh, this this particular Easter egg you you're mentioning was a bit uh, already there in Alpha, mm. so it was let's let's call it a test. Uh, it yeah. was a test for us on on this idea, and it worked very well. And, uh, and and we were that's one of the big surprises and good surprises of the 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 launch of the beta is how it actually unfolded. Uh, so basically, there was a there was and there still are fifty three uh, hidden artifacts in the world that are hidden. Uh, the, in the game right the now, that, in the game right now, oh. that are like giant sort of monolith or yeah, uh, bizarre them. structures, <laughs> yeah, and with with some cryptic writings on them, something uh, that doesn't make sense at first. And so, if you if you gather all those things and you do uh, the puzzle thing and you try to figure out what that means, uh, you end up having uh, at the end of the process, and it's a very complex process. Uh, he ended up having coordinates on a, on a particular planet, which happened to be uh, Lacubus. And, and at that coordinates, uh, you find something which is, uh, actually, you don't know what you find, but now that it has been found, I can say it, uh, you find a, a, a very unique mineral called uh, Thoramine, right? And that's, that's it. Right now, I'm not saying what this is going to be for, but this is valuable, so whoever has it, has the, the, the Thoramine should keep it or sell it for a super high price, whatever. But um, the point is, uh, what happened is that there was a, a bunch of players racing to actually get to, to the, the solution. They sort of all agreed at some point that it was on Lacubus. And so one of the organizations uh, set up a blockade around the planet to uh, make sure that the, the, the guys on the ground who were actually busy trying to find the location uh, would not have competition. And that, that was... a. That reminded me uh, a bit of uh, you know Ready Player One and yeah. people trying to get the egg and, and, and you're fighting and so on. It, it's kind of super cool, and, and you got those guys who are going to Lacubus for whatever reason and they got shot. <laughs> and, and it's interesting. This is this for is me, the, it's very the universe sort of emergent gameplay in a way. Like, that's emergent. You didn't expect that... it to happen, but yet the players have got well, we'll do it anyway. And for that, it produces but... a very good gameplay for everyone else. It it it, it is actually getting alive. Mm. The, the world as you know you don't understand everything there are some lots of things you should know about you don't necessarily know so information is important and that that's really cool and definitely yes we're going to do that again uh so we we are starting to work on a new uh, puzzle uh, that is going to be again you know it's going to be at the scale of the whole universe we have to make something you know that that is uh, grand uh the the you know the challenge 
and we acknowledge that this is a I mean, maybe something that we, we should have done better in the first uh, puzzle is to be able to get as many people on the, the trail as possible. Um, that, that that's a difficult thing because you have yeah. to make a puzzle that, that that invites people for cooperation as well as competition, right? So uh, that that's something we we're working on so that at some point you know there's an interest for everyone to share what they already have. Uh, but at some point, competition kicks in again, and and the sharing sort of ends. It does again uh, come down to that emergent gameplay where you can see, you know, if you reveal like, oh, it's a new puzzle, you know, organizations and communities are going to work together, or we may think, oh, we'll go alone and we'll get the reward at the end of the day. And it really is up yep. to the players, you know, how it plays out. Do you work together for the benefit of it going faster, or do you do it alone in the hopes that you'll be the sole proprietor of whatever it is? Yeah, it should be such that it's it's extremely hard to do it alone or just with your org, uh, so that that's you know that's that's a design challenge. But we have ideas on that, and um, it's going to be super cool. So <laughs> that's you know, in a sense, that is against our uh, philosophy that we don't uh, create content. We don't you know, but in that case, we do, and it's going to be together with more uh, more structural lore. So there will be more things to figure out about this this universe and what's going on. So there's a lot of cool stuff coming. In a sense, it's 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 a bit like uh, you know um, we we are enjoying this universe as well, like you do, but in a different way. We're creating a story within the this universe for you guys to figure out and to to discover. Uh, but that that's uh, that's definitely perhaps one of the most fun thing that we do <laughs> as developers at the moment. I think uh, having so, people enjoy and appreciate that story as well really like you know brings you guys a sense of like uh, I, I've lost the word myself but it's it's a sense of completion in a way and like people are enjoying what we've created seeing run around and discover these stories yeah. is fantastic at the end of the day. That was a treat you know just to see people I was looking on Discord people inventing all sorts of theories you know to to figure out what the you know the puzzle was about and and the meaning <laughs> they were all wrong i remember and one of was... my <laughs> org member found the monolith on one of the planets and i was sat there yeah. going i wonder what it could be i'm a big fan of like all sci-fi like ready player one stargate etc i was like oh i wonder if it opens up something like another system like you alliance together some giant gate appears people had all these theories running around for me as someone who also writes stories it's fantastic when you get players and yep. people thinking about these great ideas because you don't know where it leads. And that is like the you know, birth of the motion gameplay in a way. That's the idea is that, you know, we have a very structured and, and um, uh, you know, universe that, that follows some rules. So it is, in a sense, a bit like the real world. Things are, nothing magical ever happens, right? That's, that's uh, a bit sad about the real world in a sense that magic doesn't exist, right? But what we do when we add a puzzle like that is we add something that sort of stands out of the standard rules. Imagine if you have a gate that opens and you walk in it and you're in another system. I'm not saying this is what we do, but imagine something <laughs> like that. It's something that suddenly brings back magic into a world that otherwise is following strict rules and doesn't, you know, it doesn't have that, that dimension. And that is very exciting for everyone to say that mm, there are some areas in this world where something really uh, basically out of this world is happening. And that's something we're going to push uh, more in the future. So that, you know. I think it's great because Julian is sci-fi at the end of the day. And we've seen many iterations of sci-fi over the last 100 years. And it all has something unique and mystical and magical about it. So for D.U. to have its own yeah. sort of little spark and element of that is great for players at the end of the day. So they can get involved and embrace that, really. Absolutely. So continuing so, along with that, you know, Dual Universe is growing as an MMO right now. The current system of plants and locations is going to become rather crowded at the end of the day. Do you yourself, Nova Corp, have any additional plans to use like a new star system or maybe new systems into the game? If so, how is that progressing development-wise? Okay, uh, clear answer, yes. And that, uh, that's always been, you know, <laughs> uh, in the plan. So, uh, and, and we are not going to spawn like 100 systems. We're going to spawn them one by one, I think, uh, because each of them will, will get a lot of attention. So, mm. uh, and that's a way to renew uh, resources, uh, to create new uh, places to explore, uh, you know, to expand the game. That's, that's pretty obvious. You know, that's something we want to do. And also it's a way... Uh, for us to put to push uh, improvements on procedural generation to have you know more interesting planets that are have more interesting landscapes and so on, which of course we cannot do. Uh, we, we can't do improvement on existing planets because mm. you know it, it would it would uh, reset them. 
So that's something we're going to constantly do is when we have new uh, ideas, imagine a really bizarre planet with lots of giant holes in it or whatever. <laughs> that could be fun, right? Uh, well, that's going to be something we introduce in a new system and every new system will have this, this uh, uh, interesting new things to, to discover. So um, when is this going to happen? Uh, definitely, uh, it's, uh, it should happen next year. That's the plan. Uh, I don't want to give you know, a date because it's... Yeah. Um, you know, we have also, you know, it's very difficult to, to be accurate on planning first because things, you know, are difficult to, to you know, uh, estimate in general. And also because as we roll on, roll out the beta, uh, there are bugs or there are uh, explodes or things that, that eat a lot of our uh, time for development. Otherwise, that, that basically shift everything because of that. So it's hard to say, you know, um, when things are going to cool down uh, and when we are going to be more in control of what we, we plan to do. Uh, but anyway, next year, uh, yes, there should be a new system and uh, it's going to be uh, a great place for people to discover and to explore. And we're going to add you know, new, new planets, new types of uh, planet generation that is really better in terms of graphics and, and rendering. Uh, that's a way also for us you know, to push improvements on the, on the engine and the graphics. Um, as I said again, I mean it's very hard to change what is already there uh, on the existing planet. So the the only way and and actually a cool way is to create new systems uh, along the way. And with that also comes new gameplay because you need a way to get there, right? So uh, that is basically the the jump gate system that we we have in mind that we want, um, uh, if possible. I mean we would like it to be entirely player driven. So that you yeah. create your gates and you operate them, you can actually, uh, you know, uh, sort of sell the access for other people. So that it goes it back makes to that tax the... system in a way, isn't it? Like you're going to charge like a tax yep. or you know, a, a that, fee that's to the. Go. In fact, it is the the D in RDMS, the Right and Duty Management System. We have not yet implemented the D, and the D part is about uh, the fact that I can give you a right to do something, uh, but it might come with a charge. So you have to pay, for example, each time you use that right, or uh, you might actually subscribe for a, 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 you know, a price for a month, and during that month you can use it as much as you want. This kind of models will be offered um, for players. And I think that's a really great idea. It's obviously can be used for the, you know, the gate um, to make a, you know, a fee that you have to pay when you use it, but it could be used for anything. You could rent a ship, you could uh, whatever you want, you know, you can rent the access to your uh, industry facility. Uh, there, there could be all sorts of interesting businesses that emerge uh, from the introduction of this D uh, in the RDMS. So <laughs> that's something we would like to do. It's like a whole nother of emergent gameplay waiting to be introduced in a way that will like allow organizations and single players alone to start their like little business empires and such or various things. Yeah. And uh, one key thing that, that is not yet happening as we, we would like to, and it's entirely our fault, it's a problem of balancing, so this is going to get corrected um, uh, pretty soon, is we want to have you know, more commerce and people exchanging between each other and not have the sort of uh, one organization that has everything kind of thing. Uh, it will happen, sort of mega corp that, that are, you know, at, at the scale that, that they can actually cover everything. But it would be nice that we have uh, all sorts of players that are actually trading uh, because they can't do everything, and that's okay. And they are actually trading for uh, services or um, uh, crafting, you know, capacity and whatever, so that that you know you get this economy actually happening. And that's not happening as much as we we would like to. I think we have understood why. Uh, we we are going to bring the, the fixes on that. Um, so that's that's uh, probably an evolution we will see uh, by the end of the year. Fantastic. For me, when I hear about warp gates and charging to access them and people controlling them, it sort of reminds me of EVE Online in a way, which was another big MMO, which has been around for probably 10 years plus now, I think, off the top of my head, which is fantastic. More than 15 years, yes. 15 years? Oh, damn. That's a lot. <laughs> Do you say any inspiration for Do Your Universe comes from EVE Online of sorts? or? Oh yeah, definitely. I was a player of Evil Nine, and and I have a, a, a great respect for this game. They have done amazing things, uh, especially you know at the time they did it. You know, mm. um, we we are uh, right now in 2020. We have all these powerful uh, you know um, bandwidths and, and and cloud system and so on and so on. So uh, 
Eve Online did something amazing, especially at the time, and they, they kept doing a very good job. Um, and, and yes, there's an inspiration on you know the story side, the fact that you have stories emerging between players. You can see that in Eve Online. Mm. Uh, but we we think that we can go further with the fact that you can actually build your environment as well, which you don't in Evil Online because everything is set. You know, it's uh, to some extent. I mean, you can create some some uh, uh, player on stations, but they sort of look as they have been it's designed by the game. Way. It's it's um, in a sense, it's a bit of a formal game. You know, whether you have like like chess, you have you know rules, but. You can't uh, you can change the environment, so that's mm. something we we want to push, and also we want to lower clearly we want to lower the the you know the the access uh, threshold that it, it's appealing to uh, not only to hardcore gamers but also to midcore gamers, and that will go a lot with a lot of things we have in development that are not yet there. For example, a mission system, but not only. Uh, that will you know make the game appealing because you get in the game, you have a character, you can move around. This this is you know familiar for most gamers, and and then you, you can set a course for yourself that is not hardcore at all. And then progressively, if you have more time and if you you so uh, desire, you can get into more and more depth. And that's that's how we we see things. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Evil Line is um is a very good example of emergence on the story level. And it shows, you know, if you couple basically Eve Online plus Minecraft, Minecraft has shown, and all the clones of Minecraft, you know, all the things derivative of Minecraft, they have shown that people are uh, incredibly gifted to create also 3D content, right? And not just mm. story. And the, the intuition of Dual Universe basically is that you can combine those two things and, and have something uh, absolutely fantastic. So that's that's the core idea. And um, and so far, it's um, you know, it's it's the the dynamic that we observe is in line with that. It's uh, you get story content, you get you know, three D content all together inside the same world. Um, the next thing we want to see is actually those large empires and political systems emerging. It's going to be fantastic when you do like already my organization, which is sort of small already, but it's like 200 members, which I guess in the game is medium, I guess, uh, is already making like diplomatic treaties, alliances, non-aggression pacts. I think this is fantastic. The way this gameplay is like giving birth inside of DU. It's sort of like every sci-fi kid's imagination in a way, you know, when we've watched Star Trek or Stargate or even Ready Player One to come into the game and do these things is fantastic. Absolutely. And yeah, and it's, I would say it's only the beginning because, mm. um, the the I, I mean the number of players will will grow by a factor of ten I think by the time of the release and possibly even more after right so that that is when you start to observe you know what I call you know critical mass uh, uh, dynamics that are, that occur only if you have enough people in the same uh, you know in yeah. the same soup basically. <laughs> Uh, you, you need, you know, a certain amount so that certain things start to happen. And specialization, for example, is one of them, right? You can't have specialization when you are uh, 10, 10 players because more or less everybody has to do everything because you don't have redundancies. Uh, but once you have specialization, you start to have civilizations appearing, basically, right? That's, that's, uh, that's the idea. So we'll see. And it is, um, and that's the beauty of it, is that we don't really know what's going to happen. We hope certain things will happen. Uh, we'll see. We, we, of course, are going to also uh, influence indirectly by the type of you know rules we put in the game. Uh, what what's going to happen? So there there is a way for us to nudge if you want th certain things. Uh, let's say if we want to see cities appearing, mm. we probably need to have a, a sort of a buff system that makes sense to gather buildings together, right? That's and that's actually what exists in the, in the real world. We, we often look at the real world as inspiration. Uh, yeah. Why do we have cities? Because it's a, it's a total pain to, to construct, you know, uh, uh, a sewage system and a water distribution system. Uh, you don't want to have that spread over large <laughs> territories. You, you do it once in a certain volume, a uh, certain area, sorry, and, and that, that's it. And, and that's a very efficient way to distribute water, for example. Just, just an example, or to yeah. ensure protection, as the cities of the the Middle Age were built around, you know, giant walls to protect from uh, people from the outside world. So, I mean, you have to think about why things exist in the real world and try to capture that and put it into the 
uh, the dynamics of your game so that you have a chance to see it appearing. Not because people like it. There are some people who want to make a city for the sake of making one. That's fine. Uh, but it's better if it's sort of uh, needed uh, intrinsically from the game itself. Definitely. And we're seeing sort of that, you know, element of gameplay already where players are making like large bases and storing their stuff fair for protection, especially on other planets and building walls and, you know, having fleets docked above them. So it's coming about. And I think players are going in that direction. But as you just mentioned there, the idea of like making it so there's buffs to build these cities of like linked together in a way that may have to come at you know, a later date, especially when it comes to like linking cores together in some sort of capacity. Yep, yep. Uh, that that's also something we can we can handle with territory system. Uh, as I, as I said, you know that that you have interest of having territories next to each other, uh, create some interesting uh, 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 buffs that that you want to share. So that, there's tons of things you can do. So that's um, uh, really on the roadmap in the in the coming years and uh, coming month, hopefully for some of those things, but. Maybe I should stress, you know, actually coming years is, is not exaggerated. Uh, mm. You were mentioning EVE Online and they've been in business for more than 15 years, I think. I don't know. Uh, it's possible they, they're getting close to their 20 years or something. Anyway, uh, that's that's the kind of scale we, we, we're contemplating uh, if, if the game is a success. And, you know, there's a lot of things that are going to happen along those years, uh, evolutions and, and more and more advanced uh, gameplays that are going to get into the game. Um, it's part of why it's interesting, I think, to join now, because you know certain conditions of you know the environment that are actually in the game right now are going to be transformed by the actions of the player. The world's going to be a different world, perhaps every year, you know, and that that makes it super interesting because it's a, uh, the game is alive basically. I remember uh, us having this conversation. I think it's back in 2016, 17. We said, you know, yeah. if you join now in the beta, you will you will build that city. But if a player joins in five years, they'll log in, and that city will be something that was built five years ago by a player. They come at different times, and you know, people become famous for designing ships. It is interesting. Yeah. Like it's good to join now. You are basically the founders of what will become your universe in a way. Yes, exactly. And that doesn't you know mean that because um, I often hear you know like. Oh yeah, well that means that if I if I join the game in, in some years, there's nothing for me to do anymore because you know everybody's in control of everything and so on. I don't believe so. I think you know it's again, I'm gonna take an example, the the real world. Uh you were born in the world, uh or maybe you are you were born in a rich family, but you know, most people statistically don't. And uh life is worth living. Uh you're gonna you're gonna be uh, doing projects, maybe you're gonna be successful. Maybe you're going to make your mark in the world in one way or another, uh, but you're part of this ecosystem where some people are more advanced. You, you have those, you know, I don't know. Let's take the practical example of Nova Quark. There's a lot of super powerful big game companies. Is that a reason not to create Nova Quark? Of course not. So, uh, you know, that's the same reasoning. There will be a lot of things already in the world, but whoever is joining can actually climb the ladders and, you know, who knows, after uh, one year, become the head of a big organization exactly. uh, because it won elections and it got there. And that's okay. And that's, that's a game in itself. That's really cool that you have this opportunity. Uh, and that, that's a different deal, you know, from a game where everybody starts always at the same level when you start, a, I don't know, a fortnight uh, uh, session. That's cool. It's a different thing. Here, you, ha you enter into the world where there's already things in place and you have to carve your your own story and that's cool that's challenging that's you know that's that's a very good uh, proposition i think it's fantastic when you hear about that you know the idea of a player joining winning elections there's always going to be room for that no matter if the game's you know two years or ten years down the line that would be still going to be there and if nova cork is still adding new systems there's always a new frontier to explore inside of du as well whether you join yes. an org or start one there like new orgs are going to be started today tomorrow and next week for example it's not you, know, you don't have to be within the first year to succeed in the game. People still join EVE Online now, for example, and play it. And, you know, of I course. suppose a model is successful in it. And lots of MMOs are like that. Um, but to round this off as well, moving back to our current set of planets, a big question from the community right now is a wipe, but also a save zone decrease. And we sort of touched on this earlier. You previously mentioned that there is no wipe plan for Dual Universe right now, so players and their constructs are safe. Um, but are there any plan changes the current safe zone, the environment around safe zones? Is that going to decrease, increase, or any... Anything around there? Uh, the, the safe zone, as it is marked today on the map, as I said, is going to stay like that. So the planets are going to be, uh, the planets within the safe zones are going to stay safe. 
so in the area that is, I mean, roughly marked on the map is going to be uh, remain safe. So that's that's a commitment. Uh, the the thing is that uh, the logic we want to have here is a, a sort of a hierarchical system where you have a system that we spawn. It, it might be flagged as safe. That means that within that system you will find a safe zone, and that you have a sort of a you know hierarchy like that. If you go into a system that is not safe, that means nothing is safe in it. There is no safe zone at all. So we are going to have something of that that sort, and so there will be when there will be many systems, there will be a larger sort of safe zone within the systems that denotes the area where you find systems that themselves have a safe zone. If you see what I mean, it's a sort of a hierarchy, uh, and so that that's the current situation is going to stay the way it is. Yeah. So basically, if you have a territory right now on the planet that is not within the safe zone as it is presented in the game, then uh, it's not going to remain safe, that's for sure. Um, in terms of wipe, um, as I said many times, I mean, the intention is that we don't do a wipe, that we actually introduce uh, the origin for the, the intention for the wipe that we announced at some point was to actually introduce the new planets. Mm. But we reason that it's probably just better to spawn a new system and, you know, to do that on the new system so we could keep Alioth as it is. It's not as good as it could be if we were using the, the new generation we are working on, but it's okay. And it's more important to, you know, preserve what people have been building uh, and, and you know, to tell people, yes, yeah, it's, it's real. You can go, go ahead. It's going to be staying there. So uh, the policy is that there should be no wipe uh, unless something catastrophic happens. I have no idea. There could always, you know, be uh, situations where, we have to say, oh, wow, wow, we got that totally wrong. It's impossible to revert it. Um, now nah, we have to do a wipe. I don't think so, but I just want to leave that door open so that yeah, people don't, 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 uh, you know, don't, you're in beta. So there's, there's, uh, mm. there's this risk. We leave, you know, we, we allow ourselves to have this conversation if you want. Uh, even though, again, right now, there's no reason to wipe as far as we know. Uh, and uh, there's often, you know, ways to correct things without a wipe. Uh, in any case, if we were to do a wipe, uh, none of your constructs will be uh, destroyed. We will be given uh, uh, what, what we, we, we call a, a magic blueprint. I don't like that name, but anyway, uh, it's a blueprint that contains you know, all the stuff uh, to actually reproduce whatever it's blueprinting. So you can be able to respawn everything you had. Uh, that that's for sure. So, if wipe there were, it would mean that it would impact whatever you know uh, underground base you've been digging or things like that. Yeah. Uh, which which is a serious issue, right? We don't want to do that. Uh, to be very very clear. So, um, and, and so um, yeah, that that's uh, that's how things are going to change. So there's no no change of plan on the, on the current system. Um, we're looking at how we could actually add a little bit of vegetation here and there on certain planets that have not been, uh, you know, uh, they, they didn't receive enough love. Uh, we're going to do things like that, but nothing that will impact your base or whatever you've been building. Fantastic. So to round off um, this good chat with you, I want to quickly talk about, you know, the finer points of a roadmap. So we're currently in beta for Dual Universe in 2020. Now, in previous roadmap iterations, it displayed when Dual Universe might release. And I believe that was 2022 or one. I can't remember the top of my head. However, how do you feel that's playing out now? Do you still see a release next year or maybe in a few years time? Obviously, I respect it's a decision that can't be made easily and it's ever changing yeah. plans. But how do you feel about that currently? Well, uh, let's, talk, let's talk about feeding. Indeed, the feeding is is rather good that we, we could indeed uh, release next year. That was the plan in 2021, probably towards the end of 2021, but mm. we'll see. Uh, and, and, you know, it depends when we consider, you know, that we have, uh, especially, you know, we have solved all the major bugs that could still be there or things like that. And we have introduced, uh, especially, you know, the gameplays that will, uh, make the, the game more open for every type of players, mission system and so on. Uh, so that's, you know, that's something that should happen. There's no, you know, red flag right now on, on it happening next year. But again, uh, you know, we'll see. We're, we're going to do this when it makes sense. Uh, because when you're released, you know, uh, your game is, is perceived a bit differently. It has yeah. to reach a certain level of polish. Uh, we, we are very, I mean, right now, to be clear, uh, I think the level of polish is, is 
fairly good. I mean, the, the game works fairly well. Uh, and it's enjoyable. A lot of people have a lot of fun. There's no problem with that that LA. But um, you know, getting into a release is is sort of getting to sort of a perfection level that that we have not yet, of course, uh, reached. So normally next year, that that would be that would still is you know the the goal we 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 try to uh, you know reach. Um, so I guess this one last question to put onto that, because it does fit into release, but do you think Dual Universe will ever be quote-unquote complete, or do you reckon even past release, Nova Court will still be working on it, adding things to it, tinkering, etc.? So do you reckon the word complete is never really going to apply to DU in a no, sense? It's, it's never going to be complete uh, in, in a strong sense, of course. It's going to be complete for release in the sense, as, as I said before, mm. that we think we have put uh, all the major stuff we need to put um and and that, that it appeals to a large uh, set of players that it's stabilized and everything and you know, that's it but it's never going to be uh complete i mean we have uh as i said more than uh, one two hundreds of uh features in the in the upvote list that have been put under consideration that is we are interested in those ideas and uh, if we are given the time and the resources to to work on them, we will most certainly work on most of those things. So uh, there's an, literally uh, more than ten years of work ahead of us if we if we want to. So the logic is that this is more like a, you know you, you pay a subscription and you get access to a service that is a game that that is constantly maintained. The, just to be clear, I mean Nova Quark's goal is to operate run and uh further develop dual universe nothing else we'll never do any other game that's the that that's the mission of that company is to uh take care of that uh universe and we believe it's going to be big enough and you know uh deep and complex enough so that it is it is uh totally sufficient for one company and so that that's uh that's the vision so yes we're going to do probably every year uh perhaps sooner if we can um, uh, frequent, you know, uh, expansions that are going to be uh, well in the in the model we have, they are going to be free. I mean, as long as you pay your subscription, you're going to get access to those things. Sort of like how Evil uh, Mind does it when you get the big like uh, yeah, very similar. Very similar. I mean, it, there's there's the in fact, if you think about it, there's no other way because uh, once you have a single shard, uh, and in our case, it's a continuous single shard where there is no. There's no way, you know, that you load into a system or something. It's a completely uniform world. You need to have people to run the same client. Because what does it mean if you have one guy who has the Stargate and the other one doesn't have the Stargate? What what are they going to see when they meet in the world in front of a Stargate? Uh, that, that doesn't make sense. Or yeah. Maybe we could find a way to make that fly. I don't know, but it's it seems it's like a, a bad idea. Well. It divides it's the like players. Now, so you have to have everybody with the same clients or the same game. So an expansion is something that is given for free, that is uh, automatically updated, and everybody plays with the same game at the same time. Fantastic. Well, I think that's a great place to end off this interview. You've shared a lot of information with us today, JC, which I'm sure the viewers of this video are going to be thankful for. And, you know, Do Your Universe has a lot to look forward to, not only in the end of this year, but also in 2021 and beyond, especially what we've spoken about today in terms of, you know, emerging gameplay, expansions, and what's to come to the game. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Captain Jack. Thanks a lot. Thanks.